another place where a kind of anaconda strategy that Iran has. The signage there to direct them, you know, to proceed. But something has to be done because I can't have an event. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. So I think that's But I think that it, at the longer you are in a... I'm just like, get over yourself. Any direction on what to do about the job today? No, actually, I didn't. I don't know what the deal is. It's like God is trying to ignore me or something. <sighs> Good night. Good morning. Glad to be with you today. I hope you're having a good morning and everything. Um, God is just showing himself in a mighty way with you. I hope it's been a good week for you. And uh, a lot of things are still going on and we're still, it looks like we're going to be extended a while into our, uh, our social distancing. Uh, they're saying the 15th now, but hey, regardless, we're going we're gonna to preach and we're going uh, to celebrate Jesus Christ. And we're gonna have fun doing it. I do miss you guys. I'll be, I just, I would be lying if I said otherwise. I miss being with you physically. And I look forward to that day that we can be back together. It's really the way God created this. He really meant for us to work together and be together and, uh, and really benefit and be edified by one another. So uh, I look forward to that. But since we can't, we're still going to hold up the name of Jesus Christ. Much like the story we're talking about with Peter and John, they just could not be silenced. No matter what, they were going to share the work of Jesus Christ. Now we started today, uh, uh, the video we started with er just at the beginning of this, um, I hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, there was something about that video when I saw it the first time um, that just, uh, it just touched me because there's so much practical truth in it. You know, you see this woman going throughout her day and the noise and all the competition for her, for her attention and all these different things and, and just everything throughout that video was loud and there was music and there was this and there was talking and there was yelling and there was activity and all these things and, and boy, you get to see all of that throughout there. And then at the end of the day, her husband asked her what she thinks about the new job or whatever it might be. And, and she says, well, I don't know, God's just silent. It's like he's not even, not even talking to me. And boy, isn't that so true in most of our lives. I'm not hearing from God. I'm not hearing anything from God. And, and yet we have so much noise around us. Sometimes we just need to slow down and we need to, uh, to listen. Turn off all the noise and listen. And it's kind of that was the impact of that, that video for me. But what does that have to do with today? Well, what I want to do today, as we get into the, the message of today, you know we've been studying Acts. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Boy, it's been a lot of fun for me to be able to study that and to share that with you and, and to, uh, to share that with the body of Christ. But, you know, I want to do a review. I want to go back. We're, we're about three chapters. We've completed about three chapters study in the book of Acts and I find for me and I, I guess I'm the I'm a, like most people um, there's a lot of things that I miss and so I want to go back and review what we've looked at so far kind of show you some of the lessons that have been in that so far and then uh, and then we're going to do that today but before we do that I wanted to start and open with prayer and just thank you so much for for praying for me and, and, uh, and I've been praying for you uh, regularly, every day I try to pray for you. And so thank you for your prayers for me as well. But let's open with a word of prayer before we start the message today. And uh, thank you for listening. God, thank you for another opportunity to open your word. 
And God, I thank you, Lord, that your word is alive, it is real, it is beneficial for us today, it is so powerful. And God, the truths that are contained in it are still powerful truths for us today. And God, I know we are not able to be together uh, physically in, uh, in, in all of this, but God, I'm so grateful that you've given us this opportunity to just share your word in this capacity, Lord, in this technology. So go, God, uh, be glorified. Just be lifted up, God, and, and, and help me, help my words to be plain. Lord, you know I stutter and I fumble over my words sometimes. And uh, Lord, I just want to be clear. I know it's by the power of your Holy Spirit. Anybody hears the truth and they are uh, affected by the truth. But God, use me as a vessel today and help me to be clear and, and uh, convey the word and the message in a clear and real way. Thank you so much. God, for utilizing this, uh, this time, and God, teaching us and talking to us. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you once again for being here. Now, I want to do a review, just kind of an encouraging review of what we've looked at so far. Now, there are a couple of things right off the bat. As we've studied these three chapters so far and seen what's happened through the power of the Holy Spirit coming, of course, Jesus being uh, resurrected and, and uh, ascended back to heaven, and then later on, 40, some 40 days later, uh, the Holy Spirit, or the, uh, some week later after his ascension, the Holy Spirit coming down and having the power to change lives and affect people the way it did. And people are being saved and people are believing. Uh, and all of that has taken place. But there are two, really you see two opposing reactions to all that this new early church is doing and all of this uh, sharing of the gospel is doing. First of all, as I said, the first thing you see in a positive way, thousands, thousands in that short period of time have come to believe in the gospel, believe in the man Jesus Christ, believe in him as Messiah, believe in him as Savior, and thousands have had their lives changed by what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary and in the resurrection and all those things. So thousands are believed, thousands of these Jews have, have come to believe in Jesus Christ. And so uh, that is the first thing that has happened. Now, the other uh, reaction to this is that the religious leaders, the Jewish religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, and all of those in positions of leadership among the Jewish religious people, well, they, they really opposed uh, the message, and they rejected the message of Jesus Christ and the apostles. And they've done everything they know to do to silence Peter and John and all the other apostles and try to get them to be quiet and stop sharing because people are coming to believe and they feel like, I guess these religious leaders of there, they felt like they were losing power, losing control, losing a grip on, on the people. And so it had a political uh, sense to it. And, uh, and just, uh, it was a strange thing, Lord, I, I pray for those folks, whoever this, this, uh, this siren is for, Lord, I pray for them. But anyway, we, we get to see, uh, we get to see uh, some very interesting things in that. Now, what, what, what happens? Now, what are some of the lessons we learn in these first three chapters? Well, one of the things you see is this, this God's grace. Man, it is just magnified in this time. You get to see his grace. We really get to see God's grace on display. Now let me tell you what I'm, God, let me just say that God is very long-suffering, and he is long-suffering when it comes to, to lost sinners. You know, the world wants to give God a bad, a bad rap. Those that even think about believing God, they, oh, you know, God is just so judgmental, and he's so wrathful, and he's so mean, and I'm telling you, God's grace is unreal. He is long-suffering to the nth degree. He, uh, you know, you consider that the leaders and many of those in that day and time, they had rejected the message of John the Baptist who was talking and saying, hey, there's one coming after me. He was talking about Jesus. He, there's one coming after me and uh, that I'm not even worthy enough to unbuckle his sandals. And you know, they for, for all of John's 
uh, message and all of the trouble that he went through to share that message here on earth. They wound up killing him and, and beheading him for that truth. Then they rejected Jesus' message, the one that John was talking about. They had him beaten and crucified and, and, and buried and killed. And so, uh, you know, they had rejected all of this. And so, you know, if God was so wrathful and so vengeful, like the world wants to display him and portray him, then what do you think should, you know, God should have done? Well, just wipe us all out and start all over again if he really wanted to. But what does he do? Another, he gives the world and the Jewish people another opportunity through sending the, sending the Holy Spirit down and giving them yet another opportunity to come to know him and to have a relationship with him. Man, what an amazing truth that, that is. They had denied, they had slain their own Messiah, the Jewish people, and yet God patiently held back his judgment on them. Um, you know, and, and he sent the Spirit to deal with them. Uh, and it says in Romans 5.20 that the law, the law came in that transgressions might increase. You know what sin is. You know what transgressions is, are. But where sin increased, it says, grace abounded all the more. And so what an amazing thing. You know, we see the grace of God on display. What's another thing we've seen in these three chapters? Well, we also get to see what salvation truly is and a revelation of what salvation really is. You know, true witness, if we're gonna do, if we're gonna witness to the world and, and anybody that wants to share salvation and what Jesus Christ did, first of all, real witness has to share some bad news. First of all, what's that bad news? Well, the bad news is that that we're that sin and guilt are a real thing. We're all sinners, and we're all in need of salvation. So first, you got to start with the bad news. We're all sinners. Here's the good news: Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world, and so. If you're going to witness to somebody, they need to know both of those truths. Sins in the world, and guess what? You are a sinner. Jesus Christ died for sinners, and so we are benefit from his death. And if we'll accept him, if we'll accept the work that he's done, oh, salvation, we can accept that, and we can know to Jesus Christ through that. There can be no true faith in Jesus Christ unless first we understand and, and realize the need for the forgiveness of our sins. And uh, it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we understand that need. You know, um, the Holy Spirit convicts. It brings attention to our sin. Otherwise, we'd just go on with life and could care less. And we would die in our sin. But the Holy Spirit real, helps us to realize our need for that forgiveness. We don't do that on our own. You know, I, I realize, and I, I, you know, I did this and I did that. No, the Holy Spirit brings us to that and helps us to see our need for salvation. You know, uh, in John chapter 16, Jesus explaining to the disciples why he had to go away, why he was going to leave them at some point. And he says here in this passage, John 16, verses 7 through 11, he says, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me, and concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. You know, he, he will do this if we, uh, you know, when we witness, it, I can't emphasize enough the power of the Holy Spirit. You, none of us have the power to, uh, when I talk about the salvation and the revelation of salvation, when we share that with other people, when we realize our need for salvation, that's nothing about us as humans. It's all about the power of the Holy Spirit bringing attention, helping us to realize 
that we are sinners. I still remember that day for me. I remember I was <laughs> I was so satisfied with the life I thought I was. I and I just wanted things to go. But when God made me realize my need for Him, it changed my life forever. And I'm so grateful to Him today. It was nothing about me or anybody else. It was about the Holy Spirit convicting me and bringing my attention to the need for salvation. Well, the revelation of salvation. We've seen that in uh, in our study so far in these three chapters, the showing people that they need Christ. But also, there's something else we have seen in these three chapters: uh, the witnessing of the believers to the sinners, to those that are still lost. You know, I can't say it enough. We. If we're going to reach the world for Jesus Christ, if we're going to share the gospel truth of Jesus Christ with the world, we have to start with one person. We start with the individual. How do we reach the world? Well, you witness to one. And that one, when he's changed by the Holy Spirit and by Jesus Christ, he shares it and he shares it and then she shares it. And it just goes on and on. How do we reach the world? We start with one person and we do that. We're called to do that. In in chapter 3 of Acts that we studied, um, this wonderful story of John and Peter uh, helping the lame beggar. Set on, he was set on the steps outside the gate, beautiful. He was crippled from birth, and they come along. He's asking for money, but they give him, they give, uh, they threw, they give him Jesus Christ. They say, here. We don't have money, we don't have silver and gold, but what we do have, we'll share with you, and they give him Jesus Christ. They won that beggar, that one person, to the Lord. They, and his life was so transformed and so changed, it led thousands, we're told, to be converted. That one person, the effect of that, that one person affected so many that they believed in Jesus Christ. It says in Acts 4.4, 4, which we're going to talk about uh, later on, but it says in 4.4, 4, but many of those who heard the message believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. So the servant of God who has no time for personal work and individual uh, sharing with others you, you know, you're not going to reach thousands. You're not going to do that. But we reach the world through the witness of one. And, and I'll say this. I'll go further with this. That witnessing um, starts in your home. Start sharing with your kids. Start sharing with your family. Your great mission field is your home. And boy, to share and to, to win them to Christ and to help them to understand to share that as they go forth. Man, what a powerful thing. Your home, your greatest mission field. Always remember that. God help us all to be personal witnesses for him. Well, also we saw um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the believers, a lot of individuals coming to know Jesus Christ. And what did I say before? I've said it like twice. I've seen it over the last two weeks. But the best defense for, uh, of the truth of Christian faith is a changed life. Um, the healed beggar. I mean, it, you know, it wouldn't be long after, after chapter 3 that we've studied. It would not be long before the religious leaders come upon him. In fact, we'll talk about that in our next sermon. The religious leaders will come upon Peter and John and this lame man, uh, a formerly lame man, and they arrest them, and they take them off, and they question them. And, and Peter is saying, listen, you know, look at what God has done in this man. Is that really what you're arresting us for? And that would be, that would be Peter's, really his exhibit A. Let me just let you look at him. That's nothing about me. That's nothing about John. That's about Jesus Christ. And so he shares that. And uh, he talks about the resurrection. He said, you, listen, you don't think Jesus was who he was? He was resurrected. He ascended to heaven. And look, here's proof in this man that his power is for real. It changes lives. 
uh, you know, and, and it just disrupted the religious leader's thinking. And this lame man is much like the story of Lazarus. If you remember Jesus when he raised Lazarus from the dead, and we're talking about the resurrection and, and raising people from the dead, uh, the Sadducees, we'll find out as we study more as the Sadducees who were in control during this time uh, uh, at the temple, um, they just, they did not believe in the resurrection, but all the things happening around them were pointing to, guess what? the resurrection of, of, of Jesus Christ and all of those things. And so, but when Lazarus was raised, it said that, that uh, it so disrupted their, their beliefs and the Pharisees and Sadducees had a hard time with that. They didn't wanna lose control, political control of the people. Uh, everybody kind of came to them for everything they needed. And now Jesus has come on the scene and kind of disrupted that. But when, when Jesus raised Lazarus, the same thing. The lame beggars brought thousands to believe. Well, something similar was happening with Lazarus. It says in John chapter 12, verse 19, that uh, the, the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are not doing any good talking to one another. Look, the world has gone after him because of this, uh, all the things that Jesus done, but uh, they had seen this work, this miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. And, and they're so concerned with that. Said, they're, they're starting to believe in him. What are we going to do about this? Well, let me just tell you something. It never fails. Um, and I'll say this again also, that a changed life. Lazarus, Blaine Beggar, Lamar Huffman, a changed life should draw attention to the Savior your life, my life, if we profess Jesus Christ, it should draw people to him. And a changed life draws attention of the crowd. Well, be prepared for when that does happen, when people, uh, anytime, throughout, anytime you go back and you look, uh, today, no difference. Uh, whenever God blesses, whenever God does something amazing, Changing a life, I believe that's an amazing miracle. Uh, you go from darkness to light. When that happens, let me tell you something, when God blesses, Satan will show up and he will oppose that work any way he can. And he will try to silence those that are a part of it through uh, you know, persecution and different things and just mean-spirited people telling you, you, know, you you shouldn't be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that or you're crazy, what's going on with you and just ridicule you. But I'm gonna tell you, when God does something great, Satan shows up and he opposes that. And a lot of times, very often, he uses the religious people to oppose that work for whatever reason. That's the way it works. You know, this same crowd, um, you know, that opposed the ministry of Jesus also opposed the work of the apostles. They had opposed Jesus. Of course, they were going to oppose the apostles. And they will, uh, you know, this, this same type of thinking and same type of people will oppose the work of the ministry of Christ today. We have that. It's amazing to me how quickly people will rise up to oppose something God is doing in the church um, and in the, the, the family of God. Uh, and so it is important. I mean, it can be, uh, you know, lives being changed and people being changed and, and, and the devil somehow will twist that into being something negative and people will like, question that. It's just, it's amazing. That's not in the Constitution. That's not in the bylaws. We can't do that. We need to call a committee meeting. We need to do this. I'm speaking about Baptists now. So we have to do all this. Did you ask the deacons what they thought about it and all of this? Well, no, I talked to God about it. And here's what God is doing. We need to be careful and realize, you know, that Satan's going to oppose. He's going to figure out a way. Um, the important thing is not that we are comfortable in this world, believe it or not, but the name of the Lord is glorified through the preaching of the gospel. Preach it, preach it. It doesn't matter what else is going on. If you're preaching the gospel, if you're preaching the word of God and being opposed for it, you just keep preaching. You stand firm on that. Well, let me tell you something. Something happens 
when we witness. There's something that takes place when we witness the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we see that in these first three chapters of Acts. Um, there was in this expectation that we do go witness. Now God's changed you. He's changed your heart. Now get up and go. Tell other people about it. Tell your family about it. Tell your kids about it. Tell your husband, your wife. Tell everybody about what he's done in you. John 17, 20 says this. God has promised to bless and use his word. Now, this is, he, he did. He says this. He says, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may also be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, Jesus says, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Use them, Lord. Use them in a way. Show them. Give them, give them opportunities to share the truth and let people believe in Jesus Christ, in God the Father, the Holy Spirit, because of what you're doing through these folks. Let the people be aware of who God is in these things. We have every reason to be encouraged, every reason. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. So we need not to fear to witness and call sinners to repent. I, you know, I am, I'm so aware of all of the witnesses all over this world that have it so much tougher than we do. We think we have persecution and we think we have it, issues um, and uh, opposition because of what we do in this world. And there is, there is in the United States, I, I fully agree, there's things all the time that come against the church and it's getting worse all the time. But a lot of these things are magnified in other parts of the world. A lot of our Christian brothers and sisters have been facing this kind of stuff for many years. And even worse, persecution, face death, face terrible things because they just want to share the truth of what Christ has done in them. And they are suffering for it. So uh, Acts chapter 1 through 3, uh, I'm going to tell you, when we get into chapter 4, uh, our next time. What you're going to find out, we start seeing the persecution take place in the church. Uh, Peter and John are arrested and the lame beggar is arrested. And so, just simply for God doing this miracle in this man's life. And so it happens and it will happen and it, it will continue to happen until Jesus Christ comes back again. But uh, it will get worse. So what else? Well, we, are, we see in Acts chapters 1 through 3 also, that we are to edify his name. You know, the name of Jesus has still has power. I believe that with all my heart. And we can preach forgiveness, and we can, uh, we can do it in his name. Why do we, you know, why should we not fear? Jesus' name has power. His authority has power. And so we can go and we can do that and we can preach and we can teach and we can share and we can let the world know about Jesus Christ in the power of his authority in his name. People have, can have life through his name, eternal life through his name. His name has power. We can give a cup of cold water in his name and it will bless and touch and maybe lead to somebody's life being changed forever for Christ. We can ask in his name as we pray. Pray about things. I was sharing this in the devotional this week, but this past week I was praying uh, this past week for an individual and he was on my mind and God had placed him on my mind. I was praying for him and within 30 seconds after I finished praying for him, he calls me just out of the blue. I hadn't heard from him in quite a while. And he says, hey, you were just on my mind. You don't think there's power in Jesus' name? You don't think God had anything to do with that? I beg to differ. I think God had everything to do with that. And so let's go forth, you and I, let's go forth in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. It's a powerful name. It's a wonderful name. It's a name that changes people's lives. 
changed my life, and I hope it changed your life. And I hope today that if you're a believer today, that you, just like in Acts chapters 1 through 3, we will, we will get a hold of that truth and we will go and share the truth and we just will not be silenced. We're gonna have, I can't do anything but share the truth of who he is and what he has done in my life. Well, I hope that's you today if you're a believer. But if you're not, maybe you're sitting there and you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't know if I've ever come to that place where I've trusted Christ. Well, here's the truth. Sins in this world, we are all sinners because way back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve chose to disobey God. Sin came into the world. And we're sinners based on that. And sin is in the world. And we all sin. We all do things that we should not do. Now, we're all sinners. Can I give you the good news? That's the bad news. Remember I told you about the bad news? The, the good news is Christ died for sinners. And he died for sin. And he paid for the sins of the entire world. We just have to trust him and, and accept the gift that he is offering to us today. His gift of his own life, his blood, his love for us. Have you done that today? Have you trusted him in your salvation today? I hope and pray that you have. And maybe today you just need encouragement. Maybe you just needed to hear a word from God and just know that God is still working. He's still changing life. He's still working in this chaotic world. He is truly, really changing lives today. Maybe you needed to hear that today. Well, I want to pray for us today, and I'm going to close with this. But thank you so much for listening, and I pray today, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Please make it a priority. Give him opportunity to show you in your life. Just ask him to come into your life, to forgive you of your sins, and say, Lord, I want you to lead me and take me and, and, and just lead me through my life from this point forward. He wants to be your Savior and your Lord and your leader in your life. Let me pray for us. Lord God, thank you for this day. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the truth that we have seen in the book of Acts up to this point, God. What a powerful book and a powerful explanation of what you did in that early church. God, we love you. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for this opportunity. God, I pray for those today that are believers and just needed a word of encouragement today and just needed to be helped and encouraged to share your gospel with a lost world. God, help us to be witnesses. God, I pray for those that are listening. They just needed some encouragement. Maybe they're hurting. Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they've been beat up, Lord, in life, and they just need to be encouraged. I pray for them. I pray for my brothers and sisters if that's them. God, and I also pray for those today that maybe have not come to a saving knowledge of who you are yet. I pray you would right now begin to move and stir in their hearts. And God, help them to just, just come to you, God, and ask you, Lord, just to be saved. God, to be forgiven of their sins today, realizing that we are all sinners. God, I pray that you would touch them today. And God, encourage them today. God, do a work that only you can do. We love you today. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word. God, what a privilege it is for me just that you would allow me, of all people, to share your word. God, thank you for saving me. Lord, Paul always thought he was the worst of sinners. God, I was, I was something in my, when, when you came to me. God, I thank you, Lord, that you saved me from my sin. God, use me in your work. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening today, God. I, I just hope God blesses you today, and you have a wonderful day. And uh, thank you for being with us today. Love you all.